Hello everyone and welcome to Train Talk. In episode 10 of Train Talk, we examined different steam locomotives based on their arrangement of pilot wheels, driving wheels, and trailing wheels. I also mentioned that some steam locomotives had not one but two sets of driving wheels and that these were known as articulated steam locomotives. The story is a little bit more complicated than just that, so I think it's time to finally discuss articulated steam locomotives. We will be talking all about articulated steam locomotives, how they work, and how these impressive machines came to be. Let's begin by asking the basic question, what is an articulated locomotive? An articulated locomotive is a steam locomotive with a hinge or articulation point built into the frame that allows the locomotive to travel around much tighter curves than it would be able to otherwise. On most steam locomotives in the United States, this is typically done by separating the driving wheels into two different sets, each with its own set of steam cylinders. The rear set of driving wheels is attached to the main locomotive frame, while the front set is on its own separate frame that is attached to the rest of the locomotive by a large pin. This particular design of articulated locomotive is known as a Mali, but I'll get into a little more detail on that in just a bit. A very small number of electric locomotives have also been constructed that are articulated, but for the purposes of this episode, we will only be looking at articulated steam locomotives. Before we get too far along in our discussion of articulated locomotives, let's go back to the standard steam locomotive design for a minute. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you already know about steam locomotive classification by sets of wheels. If you don't know about this system and how it works, I highly recommend going back and taking a look at episode 10 of Train Talk about steam locomotive wheel arrangements. In traditional steam locomotives, the driving wheels are all attached to a solid unbending metal frame that is part of the locomotive's overall framework. This means that how tightly a steam locomotive can turn is dependent on how long the set of driving wheels is overall. The shorter the driving wheel base is, the tighter the locomotive can turn. In engineering terms, this is what's called a rigid frame. Now why is all of this important? Larger and more powerful steam locomotives will have a longer rigid frame because they will typically have more driving wheels. This can greatly limit the size of a train that can be pulled with just one locomotive, particularly on railroads with a lot of curves. By adding an articulation point in the middle of the set of driving wheels, the locomotive's rigid frame is essentially half of what it would be otherwise, and as such, you can operate an articulated locomotive that is near twice the size of one that is not articulated over the same section of railroad without having problems traveling through curves. The need for an articulated steam locomotive and the origin of the idea can be traced back to the second half of the 1800s in Europe. Back in the early days of steam, most trains were fairly short and light, and could be pulled by a single, relatively small locomotive. Additionally, older freight cars all had wooden frames rather than metal ones, and as such, they were much easier to pull. Over time, trains got longer and heavier with an increased demand to ship goods by rail and the eventual switch of all rail cars from wood to metal frames. The small old locomotives were no longer adequate to move trains over the railroad, and so railroads began ordering larger locomotives and adding multiple locomotives to one train. There were potential problems with both of these ideas. The issue with running multiple steam locomotives on a train, especially if there were more than two locomotives and even more so in the days before train crews communicated with each other by radio, is that it could be quite difficult to coordinate. Before radios, crews relied almost exclusively on communication by whistle signals. In terms of the railroads building larger locomotives, it wasn't a concern at first because these were still pretty small by today's standards. However, after a while, locomotives got to be so large with such a long driving wheel base that there were many places that they simply could not be run because the curves were too sharp. This ended up being a particularly big problem on railroads that traveled through mountains and thus, by necessity, had a lot of tight curves. And thus, the articulated steam locomotive was born. Several early designs were used in various locations in Europe through the rest of the 1800s and into the next century. In the United States, only the Mali articulated design was used to any large extent 
with the first use beginning around the year 1900. Let's now discuss the major types of articulated steam locomotives. As I mentioned before, the most common design in the United States was known as the Mallet, named for its inventor Anatole Mallet. We will spend a little more time focusing on this one because it was the only articulated design to see any large-scale use in the U.S. To recap, Mallet locomotives have two sets of driving wheels. The rear set is attached to the main frame of the locomotive while the front set is attached to its own separate frame that is connected to the rest of the locomotive frame by means of a very large pin holding it in place. Weight from the front section of the locomotive rests on a sliding bearing built into the front set of driving wheels. Of the main different designs of articulated locomotives, this one was ideal for building a larger, more powerful locomotive that could traverse the same stretch of track traveling through curves with ease. Anatole Mallet's design was popular on some railroads in Europe, but it saw arguably the most use in the United States during the first half of the 1900s. The Mallet was also one of the first uses of compound steam locomotive technology. What is a compound locomotive? A compound locomotive reuses steam after it has cycled through a set of cylinders. So how does this work? In a traditional steam locomotive, water is heated in the boiler to make steam, and the steam, under high pressure, is then piped into the cylinders on each side of the engine to push a piston and make the driving wheels turn. After steam is used in the cylinders, it leaves the locomotive through the smokestack or chimney. In a compound articulated steam locomotive, the steam first travels into one set of cylinders at high pressure, is used, and then enters a second set of cylinders where it is used again at a lower steam pressure. This can significantly increase efficiency of a locomotive by using up even more of the available energy from the steam. Simple articulated locomotives, on the other hand, use steam only once in each cylinder, just like a traditional steam locomotive. Steam from the boiler is piped to the front and rear cylinders at the same time and at the same high pressure. Once it is used, it is expelled from the locomotive. In compound articulated Mallet locomotives, the steam is first used in the second set of cylinders on the rear driving wheels and then in the first set on the front drivers. The front cylinders on a compound articulated locomotive are larger than the second set, so if you see an articulated steam engine and you aren't sure if it is a simple articulated or a compound articulated, this is one easy way to tell. While there were many simple articulated locomotives built using the same Mallet concept of having the rear set of driving wheels attached to the frame with the front set on a separate pivoting frame, these are not technically Mallets because they are not compound locomotives, a key component of Anatole Mallet's design. One of the drawbacks of compound articulated locomotives is that because of their design, the front set of driving wheels caused excessive wear to the track. Additionally, other less expensive modifications to steam locomotives eventually became available that offered similar benefits to overall locomotive performance. Because of this, many railroads later reverted back to the simple articulated design for newer locomotives. As a result, most of the biggest and best known articulated locomotives, including the Big Boys, Alleghenies, and the later Southern Pacific Cab Forward locomotives, were built as simple articulateds. While the Mallet was the most popular design of articulated locomotive in the United States, a few other designs were used in other parts of the world as well. The Garrett was a popular design, particularly in South Africa and Australia, and it had two points of articulation with three separate rigid frames. The boiler and locomotive cab were mounted to the main frame, which had no wheels directly attached to it. Instead, all driving wheels, pilot wheels, and trailing wheels were attached to their own separate frame and were connected to the rest of the locomotive at each end of the main locomotive frame. The Meyer and the Fairley were two very similar types of articulated locomotives. They both had driving wheels that were mounted on a separate swiveling frame attached to the main locomotive frame in the center of each driving wheel set. The main difference between the two is that the Meyer type locomotives only ever had one boiler and were designed primarily for travel in one direction, while Fairley locomotives could have either one or two boilers known as a single or double Fairley respectively. Instead of having two sets of driving wheels like the double Fairley and the Meyer, 
the single fairly had just one set of driving wheels with the other set being replaced with a swiveling tender truck used to support the rear section of the locomotive. There is one more very unusual type of articulated steam locomotive known as the Mason Bogey. This was the American built version of the single fairly. Rather than separating the driving wheels onto two different frames, all of the driving wheels of a Mason Bogey are on one frame that is attached to the rest of the locomotive frame at a single point. This allows the driving wheel set to swivel and turn independently of the rest of the locomotive, an ideal design for mountainous railroads with a lot of rough curvy track. The tender, which is mounted to the locomotive frame rather than being pulled behind the locomotive as a separate car, is supported by a single truck that, like the driving wheel set, is attached at one point, allowing it to turn independently of the rest of the locomotive frame, just like the driving wheels. The Denver, South Park, and Pacific Railroad was one of the largest operators of the Mason Bogey type. Of the approximately 150 Mason Bogey types built for railroads in the United States, the DNSP purchased 23 of them. Today, the only surviving example of a Mason Bogey locomotive is Camulet and Hecla Mining Company No. 3, also known as the Torch Lake. This 1873 built Mason Bogey type still operates around Greenfield Village at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Well, that does it for another episode of Train Talk. Thanks for joining me for this look at articulated steam locomotives. If you enjoyed the video and want to let me know, or you have suggestions for future episodes of Train Talk, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. As always, I welcome any newcomers to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell for updates about my latest posts and video uploads. Be sure to take a look at all my other social media pages for even more great railroad content. And remember, you can always stop by every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time for a brand new railroading adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.